Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. I'm Heidi Borchers and I'm cool. <laughs> We're incognito. Oops. <laughs> My locks back. It's really sunny out today. <laughs> We're celebrating beach. And you need sunglasses at the beach, right? Well, usually yes. <laughs> <laughs> On today's show, what are you going to create, Heidi? I have a beach necklace made out of plastic water bottles. It is so cool. Do I use that word too much? Cool? cool. There's never too much cool on Cool to Craft. Also, Candace Jedrowitz is joining us today and she's doing a project that I wanted to do. She's creating the look of sea glass with shrink plastic. It's oh, super cool. I love that technique. And I'm going to be creating with Cool to Cast. I have uh, been collecting some Cool to Cast molds. And just like you collect seashells at the seashore, I have a project for you today that features cool to cast in shell molds. I saw that on the table. It looks really great. But we're at the beach. We could go to the beach. You don't have to cool to cast. <laughs> <laughs> but no. if you're not at the beach, it's cool. <laughs> we need to cool the cast. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cool to Craft, the beach episode. I think my brain has already headed off to the beach. <laughs> She's down there sunning in her sunglasses. <laughs> but it's time to craft. So what are you going to be showing us how to make? Well, you know how much I love plastic bottles. I love to recycle them. It's just, to me, to see all these go into the landfill is so sad. So I always think of creative recycling ideas. So these that we get by the case, I mean, we all do it. We'll buy like a case of them, give them to the kids for the summertime especially. Uh, don't, put them, don't put them in your recycle bin. Let's start cutting them apart. I have this great necklace and some seashells from the beach. You want to see how? I do. Okay. It's fun to recycle this particular bottle because this is the one that there's so many of that you buy by the, the 24. So this project, this um, necklace is made from the inexpensive ones that have this the ripple on it or the lines on it. And that makes it perfect for this project. First thing you need to do is to cut it apart. And I usually use a craft knife cut off the bottom and the top where I had pieces like this. And then I cut my shapes. And you know, on this one, there's no really pattern. It's just cutting a freeform piece and just curl up at the top a little bit and back down. And it's always a good thing to use good scissors that cut. <laughs> so there's my piece and I'm going to need, because I'm going to hang it from a chain, I'm going to need a hole so you can punch it with a hole punch or a paper punch and this is just an eighth of an inch size and then next thing we need to do is to paint it I just take a little bit of my acrylic paint when I, it's not plugged up and just put a little bit down here and I always use a cosmetic sponge and just tap on to the plastic and then let that dry completely and then put a second probably even a third coat because you want a very solid uh, color to it now if you if you're in a hurry and you want to dry a little bit faster get out your hair dryer and um, use probably like a, um, a toothpick kind of hold it dry it and um, then you can put your next coat on a lot faster. Let me put this one aside because I have some that are already painted here. And then it's just a matter of taking small um, shells and beads. So let me start gluing. Um, here's the glue. 
and I'm using the uh, Aline Super Thick Tacky Glue. It's wonderful for putting on shells and hard to hold items. It's so thick, usually I can't squeeze it out of the container, so I always put a little bit down and because um, I love the thickness here. I usually put a little down on my workspace and use it that way. So take your, your small shells, put a little bit of glue on them, put it where you want. Put some really cute little like, snail shells there. And I found a lot of these shells actually in my um, local craft shop. Oops. Come on. And let's put one more of these tiny ones on here. Maybe a couple of pearls. And on this particular project, it really doesn't matter if you get a little glue beyond the, the piece because we're going to put some little tiny, um, the no hole marbles and some other glitter and things. So um, it'll help to hold them. And I have some of the, the no hole marbles. They're little tiny, tiny beads. They have no hole in them. And you can usually find them at your craft shop. Sprinkle them in. Love to work with these little beads. They come in all different colors. And the next thing we want is to put on a finish. Oh, you know what else I didn't put? I have some of these cool bugle beads that would look really cool in there too. Bugle beads are those long kind of straw-like ones that are really tiny. And I use the 3D Crystal Lacquer. I like it that it self, um, kind of self-settles. So I just put everything, I just put it onto the piece. This one, this particular one's a little curved, so what I might have done too on it, if it's too curved and it's um, a little bit too curved, I probably would have hit, hit it with a heat gun a little bit before I started um, gluing things on and painting it. And the heat gun, if you just heat it up a little bit and then just press it down, it wouldn't be quite, you can kind of see the difference between, whoops, between this one being flat and this one's a little curvier. Tap in, a little bit of glitter, and then just let it dry. Put that aside and I'm going to show you how I put it on. So here's my piece, and I have chain. Uh, I bought it in a necklace form where it already had the, the hook on it. And I take my piece that's already dry and a jump ring. Open up the jump ring. Put it into the hole that I, that I had, and then that goes right into the chain. Now this particular chain, I also put some beads that are on eye hooks. And I also tied some ribbon. I used a silk ribbon and I just cut it off. And then threaded it through the chain and then just tied a knot. It's really, really pretty, all different colors. Also used a little bit of a twine so it gave it the ocean or beach look. But isn't that fun? And it's just made out of a water bottle. Use those water bottles creatively and uh, we'll have a more eco-friendly earth. Thanks everyone. Heidi, I have to say, this is one of my favorite water bottle projects. Isn't it cool? And look, at it goes really nice with my outfit today. I'm going to put this on. I think it would go nice with my outfit, too. It would. It would. <laughs> I'll have to make you one. I'll just 
I love all the little seashells too, and I love the um, the three D. Uh, whoops! <laughs> I guess I didn't get it done. I love the 3D lacquer on it too. Step one, <laughs> hook and latch <laughs> necklace. Step one, you can't do two things at one time. <laughs> but you can't talk and put on a necklace at the same time. <laughs> Chewing gum. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing that. <laughs> Candace Jedrowitz is getting into the beach theme on today's show by creating a necklace with shrink plastic. How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> Candace is creating a necklace with shrink plastic and it's the look of beach glass. Hi Candace. Thanks Tiffany. Hi everyone. Welcome to my studio of Perpetual Mojo. When I first had the idea to turn shrink plastic into the look of beach glass, I thought I was having a brilliant idea. It turns out it's been a brilliant idea many times already. I researched it on the web and found all different kinds of ways to do it and present it. And I tried a few of them. Here they are. Here are three examples of the technique that I'm going to show you today. And I start with clear shrink plastic. That's my preference. And I sand both sides. You can start with frosted if you want to. And in the directions with the clear plastic, they do tell you that you only need to sand one side. But since I'm going for a real frosty look, I, I did both sides. So that's what I'm recommending. So start by cutting out some shapes. And I colored these with felt pens. And I chose colors that would be lighter because as, the, as this cures, the color's gonna get a lot stronger. And you'll notice that these two are not quite the same color because I have already sanded this one. I put the color on and then I sand it back a little bit. And it's important to remember which side you've used the felt pen on because that's the side you wanna stamp on while it's still hot. And you can see it's coming off. It does not have to be perfect. Well, nothing that I do has to be perfect. <laughs> That's my rule around here. And I check it. Looks like it needs a little more sanding. So just keep sanding for a second and checking. You'll know you're on the right side if you see the color coming off on your sanding sponge. A little bit more. I think they're pretty close. So here's how you cure it. I've already got the hole in it, my little eighth inch punch. And I'm going to steady it with a needle tool while I use the heat tool on it, and that's so it won't flip over as it curls up, because I wanna be able to stamp right on that colored side. So after it's done curling up, I'm also gonna wait just another minute to make sure it's nice and hot and soft. And there you have a stamped design. And it doesn't really show up yet, but wait till you sand it a little bit. 
So you'll bring your sanding sponge back out. And you may also notice that you've got a little bit shiny on the back of it, but you can sand that again as well. This is why I wanted to keep the color on the top because when I stamped, all of the darker colors went down into the recesses and they'll stay there even after it's sanded. Very nice. Then just flip it over and Give it a little more frost on the back. Now you're ready to make some jewelry. Here's what I have in mind. This is a really simple little design. And I think it works really well with the beach glass concept. I measure my wire, and this is 20 gauge wire, by fingers. So I have two pieces that are about four fingers wide. I'm going to start about in the middle. This is where you want to put your wire at the widest part of the round nose pliers. And then you'll crimp it with your chain nose pliers. Just like that. And then you will slide this part on. On through your beach glass. Perfect. Now you're going to grab hold of that ring that you just made and you're going to bend one side to the side and the other one stays up like that. Now twist the other one around a couple of times. I think that should be enough. Trim off the excess. Slide your first bead on. And I put the green next to the purple because I just love those colors together. Now you'll make another loop right above there. Only you won't make it as big as the first one. This will be out towards the narrower end. And you want to leave just a little tiny space between the bead and the pliers to wrap the tail around. Okay, now I'm going to look at it and straighten it up. You want the, the wires and the loops to run parallel the best you can. I'm not always successful <laughs> with that, but that's okay too. Twist it around, cut off the excess. And now for the ear wire. The ear wire is just as easy. And again, it's about four fingers. And I'm gonna come in about an inch. So you'll want to line up not in the middle like we did before, but mm, maybe in the mid length or in the mid width of the round nose pliers and with about an inch on the end. And you're going to do the same thing. Fold it over, crimp it, now you'll slide your dangle piece right down into that loop and your second bead goes over both wires. So that's never gonna come off of there. This is secured and that's secured. Both of those loops cannot come undone. Now you'll grab hold of the loop at the bottom that you just made below the bead and you'll take that short tail and wrap it around again like we did before. Trim off the excess. It 
decide on your orientation. This has a front side and a back side, so I know that that's where that needs to be. And how is it going to hang? I might need to twist that a little bit. Yep. So the top loop should not be the, going the same way as the bottom loop. It should go the opposite way, like that. So you see you have you see the side of it here and you see the whole loop up here. That's how you face your earring piece the right way. And now, and this is probably the easiest part and the funnest part, I'm just going to push up with the handle of my pliers while I shape it down around with my thumb. So I'm pushing up. Ta-da! There you go, lovely pair of earrings. And then you'll trim the wire that you don't want and then the last thing is to sand that piece because you don't want it poking you when it goes through your ears. Shrimp plastic is really a lot of fun to work with and there's so many things you can do with it. I hope that you enjoyed this project. I hope that you're inspired to try something like it and if you do, I get to see it. You can email me at candace at cooltocraft.com with your photo and tell me what you liked about it and what you didn't like about it because I want to see and I want to know. Thanks everyone. I'm looking at these and I really thought that these were real. See, you don't necessarily I, need to go to the beach to collect I, shells I really when thought, you can make them from cool to cast. I cannot believe it. I picked this one up and I'm like, oh, she got a really cool shell. And then I'm like, that is a cool to cast. Oh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you. You did good. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> you have to see what I actually do with them besides just pouring them. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what I'm creating today is a wall hanging project with Cool to Cast. Now would you like to see how I finish these off? Yes, please show us. Here are the supplies that you will need to create the Cool to Cast shells. Here is the package of Cool to Cast and a mold. You can use a resin mold, plaster mold, candy mold, any type of mold that has the design that you would like. I have water and a couple of measuring cups and a plastic bag. Now this technique for mixing is what my sister Heidi prefers. I also like to use a plastic container with a lid. This is really easy. So I have a half a cup of cool to cast and I'm putting in a quarter cup of water. Just press some of that extra air out of your bag, close it up, and give it a good shake. Even though I've already zipped it closed, I like to hold on to it because sometimes I find when I start shaking that I haven't really closed it and the cool to cast starts coming out of the bag. So you're going to want to continue to shake this, there's a little bit of extra air in there, shake this for about a minute. I noticed when I used the plastic bags that you want to check the corners to make sure any of the dry cool to cast is not stuck in those corners. You can mix up larger batches. We'll see, I think, a half of a cup will fill up one of these shell molds. But you can do larger batches or smaller batches. And we're going to just pour this right into the mold. When you mix up your cool to cast, you want it the consistency of pancake batter. This is a little bit thicker than I like, so I could have always added a little bit more water, but this will be fine. 
what you want to do is tap this down and make sure that it gets into all of the edges of that mold. Tap on the top and little on the side. That's going to bring the bubbles to the top. And you'll find as this sits that those bubbles will just pop and go away. What you want to do now is leave this undisturbed for about an hour. It's going to take an hour for the cool to cast to set up. Once your cool to cast has set for about an hour, it is solid and all you need to do is turn your mold over and you should be able to just shake it right out of the mold. Sometimes you have to pop it a little bit and sometimes I actually have to hit the mold into my hand in order to get the pieces out. But uh, they should pop out pretty easy. One of the other things I wanted to tell you, every time that I pour any of my cool to cast, there's usually some drops left in the bag and I always keep a jewelry mold handy so that any of the extra plaster that's left over in my bag or container, container I always pour into my jewelry mold. So keep that in mind. You want to use every single last drop of that plaster. Once you have taken your pieces out of the mold, you do want to let them set for several hours or overnight until they are completely dry. When you pop them out of the mold after about an hour, they're solid, but they're still very, very moist. Also, when you take them out of the mold, I like to grab just a wet wipe and run that along the edges to smooth any of the rough edges on the side. You can also use sandpaper to do that. So let these set for a couple of hours because you want them to dry out a bit before you add your alcohol ink. To color my cool to cast pieces I use alcohol ink and I mix it with a little bit of water. So I'm going to put water into the bottom of these containers and squirt in my alcohol ink. The more alcohol ink that you use in this mixture, of course, the darker your color will be. So if you want a very light wash, start with more water. Mix that up just a little bit and brush it right on. So this is a little bit brighter than I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more water and lighten that wash up a little bit. I just use very inexpensive kids brushes to use to apply my inks. On this project you don't have to, but I always like to color the back of all of my pieces just in case I don't end up gluing them down, I have a nice finished back. Do the same thing on this. If you want to, you can bring in a bit of both of the colors, of course, and paint these any way you'd like to. If you want a smoother back on the back side of your pieces, you can always sand them. Just lay them down on a piece of sandpaper and rub them back and forth if you want to smooth out that back edge.
And that is how easy it is to color your cool to cast pieces with the alcohol inks. You're going to want to let these set completely to dry. Again, depending on the humidity, it may just take a few hours or I just leave them to set overnight. What I'd like to show you next is how I did the crackle effect on my wood. There are different crackle mediums available. This particular medium gives you a look of more weathered wood as opposed to some crackle which give you more of an eggshell crackle effect. So you're going to want to select which type of crackle or antiquing effect that you would like. This is a really cool look with um, weathered wood kind of peeled paint effect. So I'm going to use a little bit different coloring than what I did on my finished example so that you can see this a little bit better. The first step is to paint the base coat on and all of these instructions would be on your bottle of crackle. So be sure and follow whatever label instructions that you have for whichever crackle you are using. But what you're going to do is you're going to base coat this completely. This will end up being the background color for your, clack, your crackle. And so keep in mind that you might want to do bolder colors for more contrast. I am going to let this dry completely before I go on to the next step. Now that my paint is dry, it's time to add the coat of this one-step crackle. And I just use my fingers to spread it right over the paint. And you want a medium thick coat. And this is going to need to set for anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes until it's tacky to the touch. I want to make sure that I get that all the way out to the edges. Smooth coat and you will want to let this set here in California, it takes about 30 minutes, so again, depending on your weather, how much humidity there is, you're going to want to keep checking it about every 15 minutes until it has a slightly tacky touch where you can see the imprint of your finger and it holds that imprint. So we're going to let this set. Okay, it looks like this is ready to go for the next step. I have put my finger into this and you can see that it's holding the fingerprint. So the next thing you want to do is pick your contrasting color. This is just a subtle contrast of color. On this particular product you only want to stroke your paint once. So you can't keep going back in, in one spot. So keep in mind make sure you have enough paint out on your palette so that it makes it the whole way down. And what you have to do is you need to let this set. And in just a few minutes you'll start to see it crack. Already it's starting to crack right here. It's so cool. I love playing with crackle. So we're going to watch for just a moment and as this starts to crackle, then the top coat is separating so that you can see the bottom coat underneath. See, we are actually watching paint dry. <laughs> what I did on my example on my plaque, my wall plaque, is I used two colors that were very very similar because I wanted just a subtle crackling effect on the back. So you can see the difference here where I used a very subtle pink to the back and put the ivory over the top. Let this dry completely. It may take several hours 
for this to dry completely. You can put an overcoat or sealer over this if you'd like to, but on my finished example I did not. This plaque is really cool. It has nine separate inserts that just lay into the background piece. I have painted each of those and then I've crackled them and you would just glue these in place. I'd use the Aline's Super Thick Tacky Glue to hold both the wood down and then also each of the cool to cast pieces. So I'm going to just use my fingers here. The Super Thick is very thick and very tacky so very easy to use your fingers to apply to the back and give that a nice coat of glue. Center that and wiggle it just a little bit. That helps to secure it in place. Same thing on the larger piece. So continue to glue all of your pieces down. Decide where you want to put all the different colors and designs. Finish gluing those down, set this aside to dry overnight, and then you are ready to hang your seashell plaque. As you can see, Cool to Cast is one of my very favorite products. I love it. I love, there's so many things you can do with it. You just don't think that you can do that much with this project product, but you can. I love giggling with my sister. Can I <laughs> laugh at your stumble? <laughs> if you want. I'm sorry. We get behind the scenes here and we start giggling and then we can't get our words out. <laughs> so we need to do a recap of today's show okay. and just in case anyone missed the festivities on today's show well first of all it's a beach day so we started off the show that that way and i did my beach necklace using the water bottles uh, and the seashells and uh, love this project i actually have another necklace that i have the same technique with a little bit of different twist that we'll show in the next uh, month or so on, on one of our shows, so um, be sure you start saving your water bottles. And Candace Jesuits created the look of sea glass with shrink plastic. It's a great technique. And think of all the things you can do with that. You can actually fool your friends that you have beach glass and you really don't. And speaking of fooling your friends, <laughs> I fooled my sister with cool to cast. <laughs> I created seashells with cool to crack with cool to cast. See, now I get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I created seashells with cool to cast. Say that five times fast again. She sells seashells down by the seashore. I can say easier than cool to cast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a great wall decor that you can create using cool to cast and molds. Mm -hmm. It was a great show. Lots of fun. I think it's time for us to head on down to the beach, Miss Heidi. Me too. The sun's out. I'm thinking that we're just going to go hang out at the beach all day. I do want to remind everyone to check out our Facebook fan page. You will go to facebook.com slash cool to craft and leave us comments about our goofiness on today's show. And our coolness. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling pretty cool here. I may do this all the time. <laughs> And what else do we need to tell everyone? Oh yes, stop by cooltocraft.com because you can find the replay of our shows. You can find the links to our print instructions. Mm -hmm. You can find Heidi's blog. Kind of, some days. <laughs> <laughs> when she's feeling like it. But see, I've got, I'm behind sunglasses, so Heidi's not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll have to talk to her about that. <laughs> Will you do that? Will you talk to Heidi about that? I've been trying to get Heidi to blog forever and because inquiring minds want to know. I've been so busy. Take care of that. 
You can tell because you're here now. I know, I know. Hey, in case you missed the news, I am now living on the West Coast. And my studio's here, Eco Heidi Studio is there on the other side of the wall. I like about eight feet that way. <laughs> about eight feet is where it starts and then it goes on for another 30 or 40 feet. I don't know how long that is, but anyway. Thank you for sharing your creativeness and your coolness today. Thank you, it was I'm so much fun. <laughs> so cool to craft. And get creative. Get inspired. Be cool, just like Heidi. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's so cool. cool.